Hello, my name is Dr. Nicole Rochester, and I am the Consulting Medical Advisor for Health Equity for the Immune Deficiency Foundation. Today, I'm going to share five questions that every patient, every family member, every support person should ask during medical encounters. This information is so incredibly important, and it's one of the many ways that you can effectively advocate for yourself and your loved ones in healthcare settings. The first three questions come from the Ask Me Three campaign which is an amazing program by the Institute for Healthcare Improvement or IHI. So let's get started. Question number one is what is my main problem? Now in healthcare terms, we're referring to your diagnosis. It may seem weird to you to ask the doctor or the healthcare professional, what is your main problem? But would it surprise you to learn that many patients and family members leave medical encounters without a clear understanding of what exactly is wrong. And you can't take full control of your health if you don't have a clear understanding of what's wrong. So I wanna empower you to ask this question every time you have a medical encounter, whether it's with your primary care physician, a specialist consult, the emergency department, or an urgent care center. Always ask what is my main problem? For some of you, you may have multiple acute and chronic medical conditions, but typically when we seek medical care, there's one specific problem that is the most significant problem at that time. And so by asking, what is my main problem? It allows you to focus on the problem that the clinician is most concerned about. All right, question number two is, what do I need to do about it? In healthcare terms, what we're referring to here is the plan. Anytime you seek medical care, the doctor or the other healthcare professional seeing you develops a plan of care based on the diagnosis. And so when you ask, what is the plan of care? What you are doing is communicating with your healthcare provider so that he or she can share what are their recommendations for this problem that they have just identified. That plan of care may include a prescription medication. It may include over-the-counter medications. The plan may involve you modifying your physical activity or modifying your diet. The plan may include you following up with a specialist. Perhaps the plan involves you going to the lab and having your blood drawn so that they can do additional diagnostic studies. It may involve radiologic tests like x-rays, CT scans, or MRI scans. So by asking, what do I need to do about it? This allows you to have a very clear understanding of what is the plan for your medical problem. Question number three is, why is it important for me to do this? I absolutely love this question because what I have learned through my 20 plus years of being a pediatrician, through my work as a professional health advocate and being a former caregiver to my late father, many patients and family members don't fully understand the importance of following through with the recommendations that healthcare providers have made. As a healthcare provider myself, I can share with you very transparently that sometimes we inappropriately label patients as being non-compliant. That's actually a term that I do not like at all because when we say that, it doesn't get to the root of the problem. There are so many reasons that patients don't follow through on our recommendations. And one of them is that we often fail to communicate properly about why those recommendations are important. I'll share with you very briefly that my late father had a lot of chronic medical conditions and there were a lot of things that his doctors asked him to do. And he did not always follow through on those recommendations. And unfortunately, as a result of that, his health declined. But what I learned as I began taking care of him and being more intimately involved in his medical care is that sometimes the reason he wasn't doing particular things or the reason that he hadn't stopped doing particular things was because he really didn't have a full understanding 
of the consequences of his actions and how they would impact his overall health. So I encourage you to ask, why is it important for me to do this? That opens up the door for a rich dialogue between you and your healthcare professional so that they can address your concerns and questions and any challenges that you may foresee in terms of enacting these recommendations, but also they can help you to understand why these recommendations are so important. All right, let's move on to the last two questions. Question number four is how can I reach you if I have questions or concerns? I get so many phone calls, text messages, and emails from friends and family members after leaving a medical appointment because they get home and they realize that they have questions that they forgot to ask, or maybe a couple of days later, they realize that they're not feeling as well as they thought they should, and they don't know what to do. And I always ask them, did you follow up with your doctor? Did you call his or her office? And often they say, well, I didn't know I could do that, or I don't want to bother him or her. And so I want to encourage you, before you leave that appointment, ask your healthcare professional, how can I follow up with you if I have questions or concerns? You should never expect to get everything done in one medical appointment. And a lot of times things come up after the visit. We don't want you to wait one month or three months or six months until that next follow-up appointment, only to find out that you were having problems that we could have addressed in real time. So always ask, how can I get in touch with you if I have questions or concerns? That may involve a phone call to the office. In this day and age, with the advent of the electronic medical record, there are so many additional opportunities to reach your physician and your healthcare team. Perhaps you can send a message through the portal, or maybe there's an email address. These are all ways that your healthcare professional can respond to you when they have time to do so. So don't worry about bugging them. We want you to be well. And in order for you to be well, that means that you need to be able to ask questions and you need to be able to share concerns and challenges as they come up. Last but not least, question number five is, what are the alternatives? I really, really love this question because it's something that doesn't get asked enough. I encourage you to take an active role in your healthcare journey. And part of doing that is asking the important questions that sometimes may make your doctor think outside of the box. There are always standard treatments and therapies, but for many medical problems, there are alternatives. And if you don't ask this question, it is very unlikely that your healthcare professional is going to explore those alternatives. We typically default to what we recommend most often and hopefully to what is also the standard of care. But for many medical conditions, there are treatment alternatives. So when the doctor has explained what the treatment plan is, if you have concerns about that plan based on your ability to carry that out, based on cost, based on potential side effects or complications, I encourage you to speak up and ask, are there any alternatives? You may be surprised and it will open up an entirely new conversation so that you now have additional information with which to make an informed decision. All right, so let's do a recap. Question number one, what is my main problem? Question number two, what do I need to do about it? Question number three, why is it important for me to do this? Question number four, how can I reach you if I have questions or concerns after this encounter? And question number five, what are the alternatives to the therapy that you recommended? I hope that this has been incredibly helpful. Please peruse the website for additional information, and I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Take good care.